Hello, my fellow pin enthusiasts. So I've got another uh, pin review here. And of course, we're gonna take a look at the Moonman T2 fountain pen. Now this is the packaging that you will more than likely receive the pen in. Um, pretty standard Moonman packaging. We, we've seen this packaging on other Moonman uh, pins as well. Um, I've even got one right here. This is uh, my last M8. While it's a different color, the, the actual pin coffin is exactly the same. Um, so pretty standard. This one is kind of funny though. The label that I got it with is actually an M200 label. So um, might be a, a rece recycled packaging potentially. For me, that's not a problem. Um, you know, I don't really care that much about the pin coffins. I, of course, you know, worry more about the actual writing instrument inside the pin. Now, revealing the pin, um, I did show or choose to go with the silver finish. Um, right now this pin is being offered in really two different colors, the silver that you see here and kind of like a light brown uh, color as well. Now, as you can tell, I, I have received this pin. I received it a few days ago. I have um, waited to ink up the pin or do any of that until I actually shot this video. So I've been wanting to get this video shot and that's why we're doing it right now. But it's still inside of its little packaging here. So we're going to set that pin coffin off to the side and take this pin out. So, you know, first things first, um, I really, really like the uh, material of this pin and just the overall look of it. Um, I know this pin is very reminiscent of a stipula uh, fountain pin. And I did look at the images of that pin. Thank you for those of you that commented on the last pin news video. And, and all of you are very much so correct. It does look a lot like that pen. Um, I paid $29.99 for this pen. I did get it off of Easy Buy, their eBay site. And um, very quick shipping, very quick turnaround. I think I had this pen to my front door in less than two weeks. So I was very impressed with that. Um, and of course, as you can tell, the pen is in very nice condition. <clears throat> Taking a closer look at the fountain pen. You can see we've got a nice um, shiny kind of steel um, cap finial here. You know, we take a look at the clip here and we've seen this clip on some other uh, Moonman fountain pens as well. You know, it, it serves a, a good purpose. You know, it looks nice, I think. Um, fits well with the pen. Now we've got kind of this uh, really nice aluminum material. It's very nice and uh, textured. Very similar to that of like the pin BBS um, uh, 323 with its uh, aluminum finish. And then of course, I think if you have the Moonman T1, the material is gonna be very similar to that as well. Nice wide cap. Um, you can tell right here in the middle of the cap is its widest point. And then we work our way down to really what we would consider an ink window. And this, I really like this resin. I mean, it is just super, super clear. I think it's going to look really cool and nice whenever you get some ink in there. We have some Moonman branding. And really, we have two Moonman brandings on here separated by that little dot on either side. And I really have no issue with that whatsoever. I mean, if you're going to put branding on a pan, I think it it won't show up extremely, um, it won't be very apparent when you have a lot of ink in there, if this is full. So again, I have no issue with the way they put the branding on there. Working our way towards the back of the barrel, we again have another metal uh, piece here. And then again, more of that aluminum material and the silver finish. And then we've got another uh, end finial piece. Now, as far as uncapping this pin, it's gonna take you, there's one full turn, a little over one and three quarters turns. Um, and then we will reveal that nib and section. So this is a metal section. Um, here we see our threads. Uh, threads are very well machined. The section is um, pretty comfortable as far as its overall length and everything. Of course, it's an hourglass um, shaped section. So you've got that concave kind of right in the middle and then it flares out at the end. Nice uh, 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 silver nib at the end, the silver moon man nib. Um, of course, you've got that stamp feed on the back. So pretty basic generic. <clears throat> now, what makes another thing that makes this pin, to me at least, really cool is the filling system that they chose to go with on this pin. So the back of the barrel, of course, unscrews. 
and then we reveal the filling system. So this is actually a piston filler, really a Twisby Go style setup where you just simply push down on this bar. I have noticed once you get this going a couple times, it works very well, but the, the piston does stick a little bit. Like the first time I did it, it took a minute. I will say it is very well greased. Um, once you get it going, it's perfectly fine. Kind of similar to that of a, a PIN BBS 355, like the first time I ever used that. Um, it was a little bit difficult to use at first, but again, this definitely um, is, once you get it going, it works good. I think if you wanna do a, a single hand operation, definitely manageable um, to do so. And the fact that they chose that number six size nib and you have a little bit more or a little bit longer section, you know, unless you have just super large hands, it should be pretty easy to stick inside of an ink bottle without getting ink all over your hand. Um, <clears throat> but there you have it as far as the overall structure of the pen goes. Of course you have uh, metal threads here, metal inside of this uh, barrel piece here. So should, you know, not have any issues there, no cross threading or anything like that. As far as the inside of the cap goes, it has a nice um, plastic uh, liner here. Um, so the threading and everything feels nice. Now there's no real um, inner cap liner or ridge from what I can tell. But to give a little bit closer look, you can kind of see down in there hopefully. And there actually is a ridge. So, and it looks like, so we've got a little bit of metal showing through. You may not be able to see it or it may not pick it up perfectly on the video. Um, but it definitely looks like you can take off that cap finial. It uh, looks like it's almost held in by a, a bolt. So I'm sure there's a way to unscrew it. Um, there is some metal peeking through at the end. So be interested to see over time, two things. Number one, how well does that keep the nib um, wet? Does it, is it, you know, keep from drying out? And then um, also do we have any issues with that metal piece that's exposed with it corroding over time? Um, you know, just before we kind of move on with the video, you know, one of the things I, for those of you that don't know, I'm not a huge fan of metal sections. Um, I already can tell this is going to be a fingerprint magnet. It will be interesting to see over time how well I enjoy using this pin with this section. Um, you know, aesthetically speaking, this pin for me already checks a lot of the boxes. I think it's a very attractive pin. So it'll be interesting to see though over time if, you know, as my fingers, uh, as I sweat or anything of that nature, how much I enjoy using this section over time. Right now it doesn't feel bad, but again, we'll see. As far as uh, posting the pen, it does post, post securely. For me, it does feel a little bit back weighted when I post it. Um, if you probably have larger hands than mine, you probably won't notice it as much. But for me, this is definitely a pen at least that I feel like I can write with unposted pretty easily. The other thing to bear in mind before I move on with the review that you have to kind of watch for, and I've already noticed after a couple of times, is when you uncap this, because of the way the barrel's threaded and the cap is, if you go to pull from back here, you're gonna start unscrewing the back end of the barrel. So bear that in mind. I generally have already figured out that I'm gonna to have to put my fingers here versus where I would normally put them is back here. I normally always just out of habit, I put my hand back here to start unscrewing. And then, you know, tightening it should not be a problem. It's when you go to uncap it, you just, you're, you're gonna realize it, or you're probably not even gonna realize it at first, and then you're gonna have that happen that just happened there. So bear that in mind, it's something else to, to note about the pen. Um, for me, not much of an issue. I'll just have to be more aware when I'm capping and uncapping the pen, or really just uncapping the pen for that matter. All right, so up next, I'll do uh, some, uh, you know, just a few sizing comparisons to kind of show this pen up against some other fountain pens to give you an idea of overall size of the pen. All right, so here we can take a look at some sizing comparisons uh, between uh, four different fountain pens. And <clears throat> to kind of talk about these four pens, so these are all f um, different. I thought these would all be d good pens to compare this uh, T2 too. So of course we have our T2 here down at the bottom. We have a Jinhao 159. Um, when we talk about Chinese pins, you know, metal bodies, 
kind of heavy pin, so to speak, because this pin is definitely on the heavier side. I felt like this would be a good pin to compare it to from a sizing perspective. And then we have our Moonman M8 here again. Um, so just another Moonman fountain pen. This one seems to be pretty popular right now. And then um, just because I know a lot of people on this pen, we've got a Pilot Metro up at the top there. Now we're talking about sheer weight as far as numbers go. This pen I really thought weighed less than the Jinhao 159, but in actuality, it's heavier. This pen is coming in at around 52 grams. For, for my calculations, it's 52.2 grams. It says online it's 51.8, so I mean, not a big difference there. Whereas the Jinhao comes in just under 50 grams. So it's around 49.5 grams whenever I weighed the pen. Now you can tell the Jinhao is a little bit longer because it has more of that cigar shape to it. And it's uh, really reminiscent of the um, <clears throat> Mont Blanc uh, 149 or yeah, 149. So kind of, you know, I think from a sizing perspective though, they're very similar as far as they're both girthy pins, long pins, and they're heavy pins for that matter. So if you own a 159 and you do like the weight of that pin, you like the girth of that pin, I think that this pin could definitely fit that bill for you as far as the uh, T2 goes. Um, you know, the M8 kind of takes on a different perspective as far as design goes. Another cigar shaped pin, a little bit smaller. Of course, it doesn't weigh as much. And then we've got our Pilot Metro up top, the smallest out of these pins. Um, but again, just to give you an idea from a sizing perspective. Now we take a look at the sections and everything and just do a, a quick comparison on those as well, just so you can get an idea of how that looks. Now, here's kind of where, to me at least, the T2 becomes a little bit more, I don't wanna say an average size pin, but it's, it definitely does not feel as just that ginormous uh, pin uh, without its cap. Now you'll notice that from a, a length perspective, really all four of these pins are very similar. Um, now girth, obviously it takes on a different role. It's gonna be closer to that of a 159. These two from a girth perspective are very close. Um, whereas the, the M8 and the Metropolitan are both gonna be a little bit smaller in, in that from that perspective. Now section wise, it's um, more of a traditional style section with that concave. This section um, is very similar design wise to that of the C1, where the C1, you know, has this nice concave section. And that was, to me, I think kind of, I'm hoping will be, even though, I, again, I'm not a big fan of metal sections, I think that could be the saving grace with this pen is because they chose that design. Because for me and how I hold my pens, that's probably my favorite section design. And one of the reasons why I love, one of the many reasons why I love the pen BBS 456, because that section just is perfect for my writing um, style and how I hold my pens. Um, <clears throat> Jinhao uh, 159, you know, different, different, a little bit different style section, more elongated and it tapers down to the end. Whereas we have the M8 here, it's just kind of a straight section. Um, these three all number six size nibs. And then you've got your Pilot Metropolitan over here, more closer to like that of a, a number five. That would be their proprietary, I think number 10 size nib is what they would consider it. Um, they go on a totally different nib scale, so to speak. Um, but again, just to give you an idea, give you a little bit more of a closer look with those sections. So, and I'm not gonna necessarily show these pins posted. Um, all four of these pins can post. Again, you know, you already saw this pin posted. It does make for an elongated pin. Um, for me, it's a little bit back heavy, but if you're someone that really likes to post your pins, you may not notice it as much. I generally do not. Um, or if you have uh, very large hands, you should be fine to post this pin. So up next, I will show this pin um, in a little bit more detailed fashion. Um, kind of take it apart a little bit so you can see some of the different parts of the pin. And then of course, I'm gonna ink it up on screen as well so you can see that. All right. So here we see the, the pin almost completely fully disassembled. And um, of course here we've got our um, cap and our barrel piece. And then here we've got really the piston mechanism. So we have our spring. This is the end of the piston rod that unscrews. Be careful with that piece, by the way. It's, it's a little bit smaller. Uh, if it rolls your, off your desk, it, there's a good chance you could lose it. And then of course you kind of defeat the purpose of, of having this set up. This um, is your collar that sits on the back 
of your um, ink uh, window here. Of course, I can't I can't talk right now. The good thing about this is very easy to unscrew and screw back on. Um, I was able to do it with my fingers. You really don't need it to be like super tight. Um, so it won't take like a wrench or anything crazy to get it off. I wasn't even really, I really didn't have to use any um, thing, you know, as far as any rubber pieces or anything like that to get it off. Now I did not taken the um, nib and feed out of this collar. One thing that's really cool is you can already tell, um, you may not be able to tell in the, the video that well, but I can pick this up. A lot of the uh, thread facets and everything are already pre-greased, which, you know, generally in most pins, when I disassemble them, you know, at, at least Chinese pins, you'll have like, sometimes your uh, piston pieces will be greased up and not, not all of it. And really everything on here has already been pre-greased, which is really nice. Now, from what I can tell, and for anybody else that reviews this pen, whether it be Chris Rapp out there, Douglas, any of you guys that might watch this video, and I'll try and watch your reviews of this pen as well, this section and the um, ink uh, ink chamber here, from what I can tell, can do not come apart. Uh, to me, it almost looks like it's glued inside of there, and I was not prepared to sit there and force it before and possibly potentially break it. I did use a little bit of rubber and hold it and just kind of um, went to turn it for just a few seconds and it would not budge. And, you know, I, I can see some threads in there, but I would almost bet that it could potentially be glued, which for me is not big a huge problem. I still think this will be super easy to clean out I and mean, there's nothing in there really blocking it. Once you take out the uh, um, actual nib unit here, there's really nothing blocking it as far as from you cleaning it out. So it should still be very easy. Everything else comes apart rather easily. So, um, you know, if you happen to have this pin and yours unscrews easily, then maybe it's just mine and it's a little bit stuck. But again, I didn't want to take a chance of possibly breaking something before I even get the opportunity to use the pin. But this will at least give you an idea of how to, to partially disassemble um, for cleaning purposes and things like that. So I might um, just re-grease the piston just a little bit more, put everything back together, and then I will actually do the first inking of this pen on camera and um, I got to get that set up and of course I got to figure out what ink I want to use. I haven't decided that yet so I'll be back in just a little bit. All right so I am back and um, I've already got my pen ready and I've got a notebook set up in the background because I don't really have anything else better to set up so that way it at least kind of centers more on the pen. Of course you can already see what ink I'm using. Um, I, I'm on my second bottle of um, Aroshizuku Kompeki, one of my favorite inks. And I just thought this would be a nice pen to kind of break in with my brand new bottle. I'm gonna do this two hand, well, I'm gonna try it one handed first. It's hard to do this over the camera. And honestly, I might have to use two hands. But we're just gonna stick it inside that bottle, press all the way down and watch that ink shoot up. And it's beautiful. We're gonna do it again. See if we can get a little bit more ink. That's a pretty darn good feel. A little bit of air at the top. Now you'll notice, um, hopefully you could see that on the first press when I didn't have any ink in there. Uh, there's about maybe, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch gap there um, at the bottom. And so you're gonna probably get a little bit of air in there. You And I can maybe do it one more time and get more ink in there, but this is already, that's a pretty darn good, you know, ink holding capacity right there. Now I am going to, wipe this off real quick with my handy dandy paper towel here that as you can tell has gotten a lot of use out of it <clears throat> put that off to the side and there you have it got a pretty nice fill there and this is gonna look so cool and then there goes my backdrop as you can tell didn't work out too well but this is gonna look so cool with this pen um, just, I think the ink and the, the filling system is so neat. You know, I don't want to say the filling system is unique. I mean, obviously, you know, Twisby has already done this. And there's some other pins out there that use this style of filling system as well. But I still think it's going to be really, really cool um, for any of you that get the opportunity. If you haven't used a Twisby Go or whatnot, I think it's going to be neat. And already the pen is um, pretty cool as far as using it. All right, so up next, I'm going to get everything set up for a writing sample. And then I will finish with my final thoughts from there. See you in a moment. All right, so I am back 
for that all important writing sample. And for the writing sample, something a little bit different than what I've done in the past is uh, I'm gonna write down the uh, weight and dimensions of the pen. So with the pen inked, so the overall weight of this pen, and this is of course with ink, is about 53, oh my gosh, 53.7 grams. So again, pretty, pretty hefty pen. Um, overall length, so the overall length of this pen is around 140.8 millimeters, around 141 millimeters as far as overall length goes. Now, um, uncapped, so this pen in its uncapped form is about 124.5 millimeters. Posted, this pin gets rather large. It's about 166 millimeters in its posted form. Now, as far as diameter goes, the uh, barrel is around 14.3 millimeters at its widest point, and the cap is about 16.6 .6 millimeters. As you can tell already, this pen writes pretty darn well. Do an actual writing sample. Hopefully I can actually write and spell. My brain does not seem to want to work today. Now, first impressions as far as this pen and the writing sample. Number one, I'm glad that I chose the ink that I did. Um, I really like this ink in this pen. Um, this is a wet writer. Um, this nib and everything reminds me very much of the C1. Um, I love writing with that pen. I just recently, not that long ago, cleaned it out. I'm already thinking about re-inking it up, probably with a different color of ink. Um, but this nib is, is rather smooth. It lays down a really nice, line. I think this ink works very, very well with this uh, pen and it just, I mean, performs very well. You, you know, this nib has a, just a little bit of bounce to it. Um, you know, it's just whatever Moon Man is doing with their nibs, they need to keep doing it. You know, for the most part, especially these silver nibs and, and I, maybe I'm just crazy. I feel like these still, I like the silver nibs, the performance of them a little bit better than that of the gold nibs or the two tone nibs. Um, I don't know what it is about some of the gold nibs I've used. They're a little bit drier and I don't, I don't quite, it's not that they're horrible. Please don't take that the wrong way. You just don't enjoy them as much. And this is a, a silver nib again, very similar to that, the C1 that I use. I just don't know what it is about the nibs, uh, but I really, really enjoy this nib as well. So hopefully the rest of you that may potentially get this pen will have the same experience. But so far, if this nib continues the way it is, I'm very, very happy. Um, this section, you know, it's not really bothering me too much right now, although I haven't written with it for a very long period of time. This is again, my first time to write with it. I haven't been practicing or anything like that with it. So I paid around $29, basically $30 for this pen with free shipping, took less than two weeks to get to my door from Easy Buy on their uh, eBay store. Um, and again, you know, I've used Easy Buy before. They do a good job. Um, they get uh, they get the releases a little bit earlier sometimes. Um, maybe a little bit more expensive than other sellers, but I've never had an issue with them. That's one of the reasons why I, I've continued to go back, whereas I've had issues sometimes with other sellers. You may be able to get this pen though cheaper at other places. So definitely if you don't want to spend that much money, you know, shop around, get what uh, deal works best for you, basically. Um, now as far as rating this pen, so we're gonna start with aesthetics first. And there we go, I can't again spell. Can't I can't talk and write at the same time. I have an issue with that. So for me, from an aesthetic perspective, I give this pen a five. Um, on a scale of one to five, this pen to me, just from my personal perspective, 
is is I think very attractive. Moon Man has hit this one out of the park when it comes from an aesthetic perspective. I really, really like this pen. Um, when we talk about uh, mechanics, so the mechanical um, perspective of this pen, I give this pen a 4.5. Um, I think, you know, everything works well. Um, probably, you know, for me, the really, I really can't knock this pen necessarily on anything uh, from a mechanical perspective. You know, again, I don't know if this section is, is glued in or not. Uh, that's really not necessarily a big issue. The nib writes well. Um, probably the only thing is the capping and uncapping of the pen and just based off of where you have to put your fingers may be a little bit annoying um, because of the way the threads work uh, where you may potentially be unscrewing the barrel and not the actual cap. So that might be something to, you know, just kind of, um, you know, bear in mind. You know, as far as writing experience goes, I'm going to do that separate um, pen has to write and for this pen it writes I think wonderfully I'm gonna give it a five I really really like this nib already it's performing very well and I can already tell this is going to be a pen that I'm going to enjoy writing with um, just from the the sheer uh, nib perspective um, as far as wow goes I'm gonna give it a five I again this pen is really cool I'm not a big metal pen fan. Um, none of my metal pens do I really use, uh, but I can see myself wanting to use this pen for a while. Now, again, these scores could change over time. I could really, you know, absolutely hate this section after, you know, a few weeks of using it. And, you know, if that happens, then I might re-review re the pen and let you know. But as of right now, I think um, I can definitely deal with the section the way it is. So my overall rating for this pen is a five. Um, I put this up there. This is probably one of my favorite pens that I've reviewed in a while. I put this up there with the C1, and that's probably if I was rating this pen, I'd put this up there with the Pen BBS 492. I'd put it up there with the C1 as far as just the look of the pen, the performance of the nib, and just how I feel when I write with it. It makes me feel good. I think it's always a big thing, you know, for those of us that love fountain pens, we love this hobby. It's not just about the mechanical perspective of the pen and whether or not it writes. It's also how it makes you feel when you use it. And uh, this pen I really, really enjoy already using, and I'm probably going to be writing with it the rest of the day and probably for the foreseeable future. So really, really like this pen. I give it a huge thumbs up, not a thumbs down, thumbs up. And um, definitely check it out if you haven't already. Go get you one because um, it's worth it. Until next time, everyone, please take care out there. I know still a lot of uncertainty out there. Uh, if you live here in the U.S., I know there's a lot of people that are struggling right now, whether it be financially, emotionally, physically. I know there's a lot of people struggling. My heart goes out to all of you out there, doctors, nurses, first responders, anybody struggling with anything related to health problems, whether it be because of COVID or anything else, um, you will be in my prayers. I hope all of you are doing well. Until next time, take care. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.